Greetings and welcome once again to Music and Meditation with Pastor Fred and Sharon Moore. Thank you, Sharon, for that great hymn, Praise Him, Praise Him. And this is all about praise today. Praise, it makes a difference. Listen to these words of Scripture. Praise ye the Lord. This is Psalm 150. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and the lyre and the harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals, yes. And praise him upon the high-sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. I was a high school teacher for 33 years. Imagine that. <laughs> and I discovered it's a good thing to keep on learning. Yep. Never stop learning. One of the things I learned is this, that students, no matter, well, the age, will respond positively to praise. Yes, we all do that, don't we? In elementary school, it may be the gold star or the smiley face on some homework. In high school, it might be a positive remark on an essay or term paper. Hmm. Praise makes a difference. It helps build a positive self-concept. It rewards effort and determination. It can give a bump to the joy of learning. In my last three years of teaching, I taught a senior English elective, film studies. Sounds fun, doesn't it? Yeah. Lots of seniors signed up for it uh, because it sounded like it would count their, for their English graduation requirement, and they assumed most of the class, all they had to do was sit there and watch movies. Yes. At one point, I had several sections of film studies each semester. About 180 students. Hoo-hoo. <laughs> yeah. Well, we didn't watch, we did watch films, yeah. We did watch films in this class, but they were classic films, great films. But there was something more that these seniors did not expect. Yes, expository writing. Hmm, didn't think they were going to have to do that. I discovered after the first expository essay re assignment that most of these seniors they didn't even know what expository writing was. And they were headed for college, where expository writing is essential. And so I embarked on a mission to teach this form of writing, this three to five paragraph essay with a thesis sentence, evidentiary support for the thesis, and then good conclusion. And then each week I assigned this kind of writing, an essay about the film that we were viewing. And then, as I was grading these essays, these seniors in high school, I didn't use the infamous red pen. No. What I did instead was find one or more good quality or qualities in the essay. And then to write some positive, reinforcing statements. Yeah. Sometimes I had to look hard to find one good thing. Yeah. That good thesis statement, perhaps. That good piece of evidence. 
that excellent conclusion, that style, that enthusiasm, that conviction. But when I found something, I would write something at the black with a black pen at the top of the essay. I wanted to be positive. Well, your thesis statement is well formulated and opens the avenue for good evidence to support it. If you spend a little more time on spelling and punctuation, you will increase the credibility of your arguments. I'm looking for some great essays from you. That's what I write. Well, that picked them up. It worked. Yeah, I saw positive improvement in essays that they would write. See, praise does make a difference. Now, I once read this comment about praise. The only ones who need praise are the pathetically insecure or insufferably arrogant. Huh, that's crazy. What a negative oversimplification for a very complicated psychological process. Yes, we all need the encouragement of praise as we grow to adulthood, don't we? And we still need that encouragement as adults. It's a psychologically sound way to stimulate intellectual and emotional growth. Yes, praise. We need praise. It's like sunshine and rain on a flower. It promotes growth. So, why does God need praise? Why does He, in fact, insist that we praise Him? The command to praise God is frequent in Scripture. Here are some examples. This is Psalm 145.3. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. And then Psalm 40, verse 3. And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Psalm 47.6. Sing praises to the Lord. Sing praises. Sing praises unto our King. Sing praises. In Psalm 50, 23, Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me. Hmm. Martin Luther. Yeah, Martin Luther. He said, The most important service which we can do and show unto God in which he desires of us, and that he be praised of us. Yes. Anything we enjoy, we praise. Enjoyment overflows spontaneously into praise. Our delight in anyone or anything overflows naturally into praise. And we praise not simply because we happen to like something, no. It's because that praise is fitting. It's appropriate. And we praise God because we are convinced that praise is a fitting response. A fitting response. The only correct response. But God does not, I think, insist on our praise because he needs encouragement. He insists on it because he knows it will build our faith. Praise helps us express our gratitude for God's blessings. Praise helps us readjust our focus from self-centered to God-centered. Praise reminds us of our dependence on God. Praise releases us from our anxieties. Praise refreshes our relationship with God. Praise transforms our spiritual environment. Praise reinforces our faith. And praise helps us to rejoice. And God himself, he enables our praise. Yes, he does. Psalm 22, 3. But thou 
art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Thou art holy, a holy God, and the very presence of God inhabits our praise. God doesn't need our praise, but he knows we need to praise him. Over the ages, his people have praised him with song. David praised him in the psalm. Saint Francis praised him with all creatures of our God and King. Lift up your voice and with us sing. Oh, praise him. Oh, praise him. And Martin Luther, he praised God with a mighty fortress is our God. Yes. Charles Wesley, he praised him with, oh, for a thousand tongues to sing my great Redeemer's praise. Yes, we have come today to worship and to praise. And with Isaiah we say, O oh Lord, thou art my God, I will exalt thee, I will praise thy name, for thou hast done wonderful things, thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Now let us pray that prayer together that Jesus taught us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, till we meet again, God be with you, and God bless you. Amen.